Ryan, thanks so much for being here with us today. Um, I think, you know, just for, for starters, um, I realize that not everybody lives and breathes Silicon Valley. Um, and so how many of you are familiar with Palantir and what the company does? Pretty good number, actually. Pretty good number. Um, do you want to just quickly explain it in your words? Because this is, yeah. this is one of the topics of our conversations is, is you know, what Palantir actually does and doesn't do. So how sure. do you explain it today? Yeah, so we our mission is to help critical world institutions leverage data to solve their hardest problems. So I, I'm sure many people in the room are experiencing a really overwhelming data landscape. It's increasing in volume and velocity, and it's in many different places. And for the government particularly, the threat landscape is also dramatically changing right now. Um, time pressures are extreme, uh, and resources proportionally definitely are decreasing. And so we view our role as building technology that integrates that massive disparate data into one place. So everyone from CEOs and generals down to frontline operators who might be researching cancer drugs or in the battlefield in Afghanistan can make really good informed decisions based on all of the holistic information that their enterprise has. So the product not only brings together all these disparate data sources, but it actually helps um, companies, government agencies, whomever, to sift through it and be able to look for patterns and do all sorts of things with yeah, that, Yeah, right? so, so data integration is kind of the first step. And then on top of that, we have a rich suite of tooling that enables a bunch of different types of users and a variety of workflows and contexts to really understand and leverage that data, to collaborate with each other across that data, and to share the inferences that they're coming up with back into an ecosystem so that a knowledge asset is almost being built as opposed to disparate bits and bots um, all around an enterprise. And explain, you're on the product side and on the government side. So yes. explain, by the way, real quick, the, the <laughs> two, the, the names of the two products, the two um, main products. Palantir Gotham and Palantir Foundry. Um, but no, but Foundry wasn't always Foundry, was it? Foundry has a, a, an origins in a, in a previous product called Metropolis. Okay, that's today, what I was those are the two for, main Gotham products. and Metropolis, which yes. are pretty cool names. Yes. So, um, so what is your role within the organization? So I run product for Gotham, and Gotham is our main government platform. So this is the original product. It was founded in 2004. Our original funding came from InQtel, which I think there's someone Somebody here from here, InQtel. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's the CIA's venture capital arm. Uh, and the original product was about counterterrorism. It was about intelligence. We wanted in the aftermath of 9-11 to build the intelligence community an analytical data integration platform that also adhered to really important privacy and civil liberties problems at the time so that all of the data could be really well protected while still fostering collaboration within the counterterrorism community. So Gotham 2004, still going strong today, and that's the product that I run. And my portfolio is mostly on zero to one kind of R&D new product. So I sit at the nexus between product and business, and I get to be really creative, and it's my job to find innovative new ways for us to extend that platform, new workflows that our customers really need, new modules that we need to do to kind of keep innovating and keep achieving their missions as the threat landscapes change. Um, so that means teams of designers and engineers and prototyping and really getting my hands dirty in the field uh, across our portfolio. And you're doing things like um, meeting with the US Secret Service to talk <laughs> about money laundering. Like when you walk into yeah. a room like that, the, the Secret Service one was, I, so I've been at Palantir seven years. Um, that was when I was 22. That was my first uh, gig at the company. Uh, I was running a meeting on a huge money laundering case with seven Secret Service gentlemen. Um, so I think what's cool about, I, and one thing I really love about Palantir is that our approach has always been build from the field. Like go to the ground truth, go to the clients, learn from them, learn from those users. And we are never in the business of of building software in Silicon Valley in a lab and shipping it over the fence. I've been on military bases. I've been, um, I spent all of 2018 in Europe with a US um, ally, a European ally security agency because they wanted a better way in the aftermath of a terrorist attack to communicate and share data in real time with each other. So I was in the field 
um, working and prototyping and showing the, the kind of users who are their counterterrorism analysts cuts of the product, getting their feedback. Um, and we did about an eight month cycle with them and that has become part of our core platform now, but we really built it close to the problem and the mission. So it's taken me to some really interesting places, um, I, you know, I can, early in my career. I can imagine. So. Um, Part of that, part of the, the the origin story, though, at Palantir and this mystique, you know, the mm -hmm. the funding from the C, from the CIA um, and the early work with the CIA, um, you know, there were all these rumors, which you guys have never confirmed or denied, that you had a hand in, you know, catching uh, Osama bin Laden. Um, so that. It seems like that was um, an advantage to Palantir, at least earlier on. Um, and as you kind of went more and more into the private sector, you already had that allure and the technology had that, that you know, um, there was an attraction to it. But, mm -hmm. but today, fast forward to today, there's been so much controversy about, yeah. in particular, your contract with ICE and, and other government contracts. Um, why, I mean, I guess as just a starting point as a, for a question, why do you choose to do business with an agency like ICE? This has been, you know, linked yeah. to workplace raids and deportation. So, so I mean, our values and our mission, we take on clients that align with that. And that mission is democracy. It is national security. It is um, those things in conjunction with privacy and civil liberties. And I think we all live in a pretty polarized climate right now. Um, society is heavily cleavaged. And I think it means that people rush to various sides of debates and think of them in very black and white ways, as opposed to appreciating nuance. So for the ICE question specifically, um, the Obama administration brought us to um, ICE in 2011 um, for something called Operation Fallen Hero, which was uh, an, an ICE agent was murdered across the border while sitting in his vehicle by 12 people. And the Obama administration called us to ask if we could help them integrate that data and figure out who was responsible for it. We ultimately were able to apprehend that individual. And the contract from there was with Homeland Security Investigations, which is a distinct group um, from ICE. Um, they're not directly responsible for enforcement or worksite enforcement. Um, and they mostly do transnational crime. And so that is things like narco trafficking or human trafficking, um, we, El Chapo Guzman cases, child exploitation. Um, and I've seen some pretty horrific um, but inspiring cases where, where ICE has done things like put 3,000 child sex traffickers in jail in 2018 so, alone. 